Hi, so when I set out to make this video, I had three things in mind that I wanted to check out on the Mavic Mini. Number one, I wanted to see if it would carry the Osmo Action. Number two, I wanted to see if it could hold a Loom Cube and fly with a Loom Cube on it. And then third, the most important thing that I wanted to check out is visual line of sight distance. How far could I fly the Mavic Mini before I lost visual line of sight with unaided vision. And so I tested those three things, but in the meantime, I found a couple of other interesting results. So I wanted to let you know that I'm gonna put timestamps down in the description. So if you wanna skip ahead to a certain part of the video, you can go ahead and do that by clicking on those timestamps. And then the other thing, everything that you're gonna see in today's video, all of the products that you're gonna see and that I talk about, I'll have links for those in the description as well, in case you're interested in what I'm using. So enjoy the video. Hi everyone, thanks for clicking on the video today. So the other day when I did a, some testing with the Mavic Air, the Mavic 2 Pro and the Mavic Mini, I asked you all for some suggestions for future videos regarding the Mavic Mini. And so I have taken some of those into consideration. I'm gonna test a couple of things today. Now, it's really windy out again today. And so instead of ruining my audio, I'm just gonna sit in my pickup for this. But I got the Mavic Mini sitting right there. And uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check a couple things that you guys have asked for. Number one, which is kind of weird, you asked for the payload capacity of the Mavic Mini. Y'all wanna know if it can carry this or if it can carry that. And so I'm gonna test that out a little bit today. Why, I don't know, but we're gonna check it out anyway. Number one, uh, a lot of you were asking if it can carry a Loom Cube. A Loom Cube 2.0 is what I have here today. So we're gonna mount the Loom Cube right on top of there. And then I'm also gonna put the Osmo Action on top uh, because some of you some of you were asking for that as well. And again, why, I don't know, just to see if you can do it. So, uh, so I'll put the Osmo Action on top of there. That's what I'm using right now to record this. And then I'll use the Osmo Pocket to see how that steadies it. And then one final test that I wanna do is a lot of you were asking, what's the visibility as far as line of sight? Because the Mavic Mini is so small, you wanna see if you can keep it within line of sight. And uh, it's a cloudy day, so it's gonna be pretty difficult to keep it in line of sight. And so uh, we're gonna see how far away I can get it and still see it. So let's get to the testing. Hey, welcome back to the channel, everyone. If this is your first time here, my name is Russ and this is 51 Drones. This channel has a lot of stuff about drones, drone related stuff, technology reviews, tutorials, comparisons, things like that. And so if this is your first time here, go ahead and browse around the channel, see if you like what you see. And if you do, click on that subscribe button. Also, if you get anything of value today, click on that thumbs up button. So uh, it's very windy out today, like I said, so I'm gonna do this from inside the pickup mostly, uh, but we're gonna get the Mavic Mini up we're going to put on the uh, loom cube first and I'm using hook and loop. Now, the reason I'm doing that is I don't want to put um, like a GoPro mount or anything on top because I want to try to keep the profile as low as possible. I think that's going to help a little bit as far as it maintaining balance. It's pretty windy out today. And uh, so it's going to struggle in the wind, let alone carrying this thing right here. And so let's do that first. Um, now, because it's so windy, I may be doing a little bit of voiceover here because you know I'm not gonna be able to talk out there. You guys aren't gonna be able to hear me. Even if I would use my lav mic, still gonna be too loud. So let's see how the mini handles the Loom Cube first. And just as I thought, I'm gonna have to do a voiceover here just because the wind noise was so terrible. Now, if you decide to do this and you get that hook and loop stuff, the Velcro stuff, don't get the Velcro brand just because the 3M brand is so much more strong. So if you're gonna do it and use hook and loop, get the 3M brand. Now, the first thing you're gonna notice here when the Mavic Mini takes off, the wind just takes it. And it actually scared me. I was a little bit concerned because the wind just took it. I thought it was gonna keep going, but it actually, after it got position, uh, I was able to, to kind of take control and then it started to move forward. Now it moved forward very slowly, uh, but at least I was able to get it back to near the landing pad. And as you can see here, it actually held pretty well. You know, the wind was shaking it around a little bit, but I moved it up and down just to see if it affected the dynamics at all. But, you know, kind of a hard test to tell in this kind of wind. But overall, I think it did pretty well. Okay. Wow. That little guy handled the uh, the wind and the loom cube very well. So very impressive. So if you want to fly at night and you want to have some illumination, you can certainly put a loom cube on top of here. Like I said, I would use that hook and loop just to keep the profile low. I think if, if you get it up any higher, 
it's going to mess with the center of gravity too much, but maybe not. I don't know. So next, what I want to try is to put the Osmo Action on there, which is right here what I'm recording with. And then I'll do some recording with the Osmo Pocket and uh, see how it handles the Osmo Action. I think it's a little bit heavier, but I think it'll do okay. So I'll just get a little bit of footage with it. Like I said, I don't want to stress it out too much. I just want to see if it's it'll be able to lift off. And then I want to see what the footage looks like when I hit record on the Osmo Action just to see if there's any wobble or anything like that. So let's head out there in the wind and check this out. So once again, the wind decided to have its way with the Mavic Mini having that Osmo Action on top. I think it just added a sail and it takes off right away, but then it finally gets position and I can control it to get it back to where I launched from. Now it also, I had it at full throttle and it didn't move. It was completely stuck in the air. So I just kind of had to turn it a little bit, kind of uh, yaw a little bit to the left and to the right. And then I was able to control it, but a direct head on wind, it did not appreciate that at all. Now here's some footage straight from the Osmo Action sitting on top of the Mavic Mini. And then here's some more footage of me going around it. You can see that, you know, it's struggling in the wind, but I think for that additional weight on top, it's really not doing too badly. And then here's some more footage from the Osmo Action sitting on top of the Mavic Mini. You can see it's tilted a little bit and obviously due to the drone fighting against the wind. Now this is a crosswind. Uh, the wind's coming from the left hand side. And so, uh, but I think it did pretty well uh, considering the conditions that it had to fly in. Wow. <laughs> okay, so here's the verdict. I wouldn't fly too high with it. I wouldn't go too far, but it certainly works. You could certainly fly with the Osmo Action on top of the Mavic Mini. Now, here's the thing. I use this hook and loop, right? So it actually came unstuck from the bottom of the Osmo Action. So that's another reason I wouldn't go too far away with this, because if your Osmo Action flies off, uh, you're not going to be able to find it. And I think the reason that this came off so easy is because it's so cold. Um, it's, what is it, 38 degrees right now, and which isn't bad. I mean, it's not freezing, but, you know, this is pretty stiff. It's not quite as sticky as it normally would be. Uh, so the hook and loop part certainly is going to stay together. But as far as the stickiness on the bottom of the Osmo Action, probably wouldn't trust that. But I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It was worth trying to see if it would work, and it does work. It does fly. And so what I want to do now, finally, is I just want to get the, um, the Mini up in the air. And even though it's windy... I'm not going to fly too far away because I'm not going to be able to see it very far just because of the cloudy sky. Anyway, I'm going to fly the Mavic Mini up and see how far away I can get it before I actually can't see it anymore. Now, I have 20-20 vision, at least the last time I checked a couple of years ago. So, you know, take that into consideration. If you have poor vision, if you have aided vision, it's going to be different. It's going to be different for everybody. But just to give you an idea how far I can get before I lose line of sight. All right. So let's get it up and see how it goes. All right, I'm just going to set the Osmo Action up here on the dash, so please excuse the steering wheel in the way. And the audio is not going to be great either, so I apologize for that. But let's get it up and see how far away we can get. You know, when it first takes off, it really struggles with that wind, but once it gets its position, uh, it holds pretty well. It's drifting a little bit. It's drifting. Well, now it's not drifting at all. So check it out. So anyway, I looked on the phone. It's 20 miles per hour right now, sustained winds and gusting up to 30. So pretty impressive in the wind. This isn't a wind test, but it's sitting at about a 30 degree angle. So it's having a little trouble. But anyway, let's fly out here. All right, I'm gonna keep my uh, altitude pretty low because, you know, I'm getting up. If I get up even above 25 feet, I have it full throttle and it's not moving. So I'm just gonna go forward here. I'm gonna stay about 25 feet high and uh, see fa how far away I can get it. Now you can see on the screen there right now, I have it on full throttle and uh, it's going three miles per hour. It's holding still right now. 
I still can see it though. It's a little black dot. We're coming up on 700 feet. All right, I can just barely see it. At 1,100 feet, I just see a little tiny speck in the sky, and I'm at just over 1,100 feet away. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and turn around. And we'll bring it back. Uh, it's going to come back pretty quick. Let's see what our maximum speed is here on the way back in P mode. It looks like 18. I'm going to go ahead and put it into sport mode. Here's another test. Let's see what we can get. Uh, sport mode with uh, 20 mile per hour sustained wind at our back. Twenty-eight, twenty-nine, about twenty-nine miles per hour. Awesome. All right, so go ahead. Let's go ahead and land. Right, so there you have it. This thing continues to impress me so much. So it can handle the payload of a Loom Cube. Yes. So if you want to fly with it at night, even though you're not supposed to, like I'm not supposed to as a Part 107 pilot, I would need a daytime waiver, daylight waiver. So, uh, so I can't fly it at night, but. If you want to fly it at night, you can with the Loom Cube on top, and uh, you can fly it with the Osmo Action on top, but I wouldn't go too far and I wouldn't go too high just because of the risk. Now, if you wanted to try it with a mount, like using a GoPro mount or the Osmo Action mount, you know, you're still going to have that sticky stuff on top to have to adhere to the drone. Again, I wouldn't trust it, but you know, if you're just going to be flying, you know, maybe 10 feet in the air, 15, 20 feet in the air, and just try to get some 4K uh footage with your mavic mini you could do that with the osmo action and probably with the gopro as well so it handled it i would be interested to see how it handles it when it's not this windy out i think it probably would do a lot better and then also with some warmer temperatures would be very beneficial as well and uh and then as far as seeing it with the naked eye unaided just over 1100 feet 1100 feet and i could see a little tiny dot in the sky so as far as line of sight 1100 feet is pretty good i mean Really, there's no need to fly beyond 1,100 feet anyway. And then the speed test, which I didn't intend to test. I'm finding that I'm testing things that I don't intend to, but I got up to almost 30 miles per hour in sport mode with the wind at its back, about a 20 mile per hour wind. So that's pretty cool. One more thing I want to talk to you about today is one more thing that you should consider getting if you're going to fly at day or night. One thing that's really going to help with the visibility. I'm not going to test it today. I will test it in a future video, but the Loom Cube strobe right here, is, is just amazing. It improves the visibility both in the day and the night. So I do have that hook loop on the bottom, hook and loop, and then I'll have it just, uh, just snaps right on the top of your Mavic Mini, just like that. And then your strobe right there. So the Loom Cube strobe is amazingly bright. You can see it from up to three miles away. And I would definitely recommend getting this, especially for the Mavic Mini. The Mavic Mini is gonna be able to handle it, obviously. It's so light, and if it can handle the Loom Cube 2.0, it can certainly handle the strobe on top of here. And it doesn't mess with your dynamics at all. Anyway, I hope you got something of value today. If you did, click on that thumbs up button and keep watching for future videos. Subscribe so you don't miss anything. Click on the bell so you get notified when I do post a new video. I wanna thank you for watching the video today. Have a great day. And as always, fly safe and fly smart.